Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Bloomberg Terminal video. It's been a couple of months since I've posted my last video and I was looking through those and found that I hadn't really discussed backtesting at all. And so I thought with the few minutes I have today, why not show um, a very basic look at the backtesting function in Bloomberg and uh, we may be able to put together a very simple strategy that will only take us a few seconds and show you what it looks like. So I don't expect to go too in depth. I know do I expect this video to run too long, but this is me you're dealing with, and I tend to, once I start talking, you can't shut me up. So we'll see how long we go for, but I'll try and make it brief for you. So before we get into the, the function itself, let's talk a little bit about backtesting. There's some debate over whether or not backtesting is effective. Uh, I personally don't have an opinion on it, uh, but basically backtesting, if you aren't already aware, is taking a strategy that either you or someone else has designed and going back in time and testing it against historical market data. You may be interested in seeing how your strategy would have done last year or last five years or ten years or perhaps through major financial events like the collapse of uh, LTCM, long-term capital management, in the late 1990s, or perhaps the dot-com bubble burst in the early 2000s, or may maybe even the uh, GFC, the global financial crisis in 07 and 08. So one of the biggest disclaimers uh, in financial services and investment management is that past performance is not indicative of future results, right? So if your strategy has done very well historically, uh, that doesn't mean that it's going to do well when you uh, sort of go live with it. Um, after all, if you had bought any stock in the S&P 500, well not any stock, but uh, some of the big stocks in the S&P 500, you would have done very well if you had just bought it years ago and just held till now. So um, I'll let you decide how effective backtesting is, but I will show you what the function looks like nonetheless. So to get there, what we're going to do is we are going to our command bar and we're going to type in BT for backtesting and you'll see our first suggestion is backtesting and optimization. Let's go there. When you pull this up you're going to see um, the good folks over at Bloomberg have included a bunch of strategies for you to use and you can actually go into these and modify them accordingly. Uh, we're going to create one from scratch. It's going to be very simple but um, I'll show you what that process is like so you can see it. But you'll see here they include things like st stochastic based um, strategies and strategies using simple moving averages and things like RSI and ROC and oscillators and um, pretty much some of the major technical uh, studies that uh, traders use are included here. We're going to come over here to my strategies tab and we're going to create a new trading strategy. And you'll notice right off the bat you have uh, available factors that you can use for your backtest. So for, ex for example stochastics or z-scores. Uh, you, can, you can go through this list and take a look and see what applies to your particular strategy. But um, today we have to decide what kind of strategy we're going to backtest. So let's see. Yeah, why don't we do something with the Bollinger Bands? Uh, since that's a very, very popular strategy and relatively easy to understand. So if you're not already familiar with the Bollinger Bands, uh, the Bollinger Bands is a technical study um, sort of put together by John Bollinger in the 1980s. And um, it's based on statistical theory, right? That um, basically we're overlaying a normal distribution on a chart and measuring the probability of outcomes, right? And so the default version of the Bollinger Bands involves a 20-day moving average and an upper and lower band that represent uh, two standard deviations from the mean. So let's just show you that on a chart so it makes sense. So I'm going to go to a GPC here which brings up a candle chart daily. And I can just very quickly add Bollinger Bands by typing in BOLL while I'm in the chart and you'll see we have an overlay now uh, which measures uh, well, which shows the, the bands here right so the purple line represents two standard deviations from our mean the gray line of course is the 20-day moving average 
and the green line, of course, is the lower band, two standard deviations from the mean. Uh, again, I said this was grounded in, in statistical theory, so um, for those who are not familiar, let me just pull up a picture of the normal distribution, and maybe this will make a little bit more sense. Bear with me one moment. While I find an appropriate graphic here. Okay, this works. Let me just drag this into the screen here. Okay, so here's our normal distribution. If you've taken statistics in college or high school, you know exactly what this is. It's the bell curve. And smack dab in the middle, we have our mean. And these are where most of our outcomes are. So within one st standard deviation of the mean, you have a negative 1 or a positive 1 z-score, you have 68.2% of your outcomes. Again, this is a normal distribution. Within two standard deviations of the mean, we have 95.4% of our outcomes. So we're saying that most of our outcomes are in this area here. So what does that, how does that translate into a trading strategy? Well, if you recall the Bollinger Bands uh, measure two standard deviations from the mean and so what we're saying is if our price if the price of our security is in excess of two standard deviations of the mean that is somewhat of an unusual outcome and so traders will use that and say well this particular security is overbought or maybe it's oversold if the price of the security is say two standard deviations from the mean there is a good possibility, in fact a, a very high probability that the price of the security will revert to the mean, right? It's a, a mean reversion strategy. So let's go back to our chart here. And I think right off the bat we see most glaringly is this, this section here where we see the price of Apple was in excess of two standard deviations of the mean. Again, highly unusual. Well, I wouldn't say unusual, but the probability this will revert to the mean is very good and in fact it did very quickly and so the trading strategy is well we'll buy uh, below the lower band and we'll sell above the upper band so you and I know looking at this chart well maybe we should just sit down and buy when there's a considerable dip and just hold it but you know traders and speculators uh, operate on a much shorter timeline so we'll, we'll 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 work with that so let's go back to our BT and, and sort of put this into a strategy and so I'm going to create my new tra trading strategy and we have decided that we're gonna use the Bollinger Bands we're gonna use the default parameters a 20-day moving average and two standard deviations above and below the mean and we're going to uh, buy the security when the price takes us below the lower band and we're going to sell this security when the price takes us above the upper band. So that should be very simple to implement here and I'll just call this the Bollinger Band Strategy. And we're going to come to our factors list and we are going to find our Bollinger Bands and you'll see our parameters are right here. The 20 day moving average, two standard deviations, two standard deviations and here's a friendly name we can give it and we'll just call it the B Bands. Okay, if you want to adjust the parameters, you just click the little pencil. I'm going to turn on shading, and you'll see what that is when we uh, look at the results here. And these colors are all good. You can modify the colors that way when you look at the chart later. You'll uh, be able to see them quite easily. So we'll just update that. And now we come to our rules. These are the instructions we're giving the machine here or the software on when to place an order and so we're gonna be entering long using a market order you can choose a stop or limit I'm gonna choose a market uh, and by default it says next open I don't think I'm gonna use the next open and what that means is basically if your condition is met uh, the system will place a trade the next the next day the next time the market opens but we're gonna place our trade before the current close or at the close when 
Uh, let's pull our parameters here. Let's say when our closing price, do we want to use our closing price? We can use our closing price. When our closing price is less than the Bollinger Band's lower band. So when our closing price, or when our price closes below the lower band of the Bollinger Band, we're saying that the stock is oversold, and that we may soon revert to the mean. Now, of course, in this case, we're actually going to take it beyond the mean and actually sell the security uh, once we reach two standard deviations over the mean, but uh, you can very easily modify this to sell it at the mean. So. You see our instruction set is now in here. We're going to enter long with the market order at the current close when the close is below or less than. You can also choose less than or equal to or the or these other conditions. We're using our factor here, the Bollinger Band's lower band. Let's go ahead and press add rule. And now we're going to exit our long position using a market order uh, before the current close when the closing price is greater than the Bollinger Band's upper band. So that's here. Let's save that. And you're also going to have to take a look at the simulation control. There's some additional settings here. Now by default, you'll see that your initial cap is 100K. Let's use something a little bit more reasonable. Let's say 5,000. Uh, default trade price next open. You can do multiple trades per bar. That's fine. I'll turn that on. Uh, pyramiding trade size all in. You can set uh, capital percentage, contracts, etc. You can specify what you want to do exactly. We're not going to go that in depth because I just want to give you a basic overview of this. Our time frame here. So let's go ahead and bring this back to 2010. Uh, commissions per trade. Now, most retail traders are now operating with zero commissions, right? If you're trading on Robinhood or Fidelity or um, Thinkorswim through a TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, whatever, uh, you're not really trading with commissions, so you can disregard that. But if you want to include that, you can. And then commissions per share. I know if you're an IB trader, inter interactive brokers, I think they charge commissions per share. Also, institutional traders will. Uh, incur a commission per share. It's very minimal, but it's there. And then comm percentage and then price slippage. Uh, not really a big deal for your average retail trader, but then again, how many retail traders are using Bloomberg, right? So when you're when you're dealing with very large positions, uh, price slippage is a huge deal and should always be taken into consideration. So now that we have that in here, going back to our strategy definition, we're ready to deploy this against Bloomberg's years and years and years of pricing data. And you're going to see it's automatically going to apply this strategy to Apple, which is this last security I had loaded in here. So let's go ahead and analyze it. And it says it's running the simulation, and it's very quick. And you'll be presented with this chart here, which shows you your buys and your sells. Now, you can actually have this put short trades in here as well if you want, but I didn't because I wanted to keep this very simple. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And you can see we had a close below the, the lower band here, and the system bought, and then it sold subsequently at a close above the upper band, right? That's exactly what we wanted to do. Here we have another instance of that, and then the cell. And each of these little markers will give you information on uh, what the trade was. So you can see if I hover here, you can see our price, the quantity of shares that it purchased using the $5,000 that, uh, that we assigned it, and at what rule. So rule one was the buy, and rule two, rule, <laughs> rule two was the exit from the position. Okay, so you can see it put through a ton of trades. And um, in the end, we have our statistical summary here. We had 28 trades, 23 of them were wins, and five of them were losses. And our PL percentage was 60%, which is actually terrific. So let's bring up our trade table. We can see all the trades it took. And 
means if we go to our scatter, we can see our um, our PNLs and our trade numbers here. Now you can come back and you can adjust the dates and and whatever you want. Uh, if you want to make adjustments to the strategy itself, you can just hit review and that'll bring you back to this screen. Otherwise, we can just go to an analyze. And one of the things I really like about this function is that you can just plop in another security here. So let's take a look at uh, what's a dog of a stock that hasn't gone parabolic? How's 3M doing? Last time I looked at this stock, I absolutely hated it. And okay, that's fair. I mean, I, w I wouldn't necessarily say it's performed badly, but here it is. And you can see again, here are all of our trades and our statistical summary. And you can see that this particular strategy from 2010 to 2021 uh, yielded a PNL percent of 133 percent, which is absolutely terrific. Now, let's see here. Let's try something for fun. So it looks like our very first trade, our very first trade was a buy on 819 2010. And we said we started out with $5,000 of capital. So that was $4,990. And we purchased 61 shares at 81.81. And we see that using the strategy uh, returned 133%. So let's do a TRA, a total return analysis, and see exactly um, what our return would be if we had not used this strategy. If instead, if we had bought on the 19th of August in 2010 and held to today. So let's do a TRA and 3M, and we said that we bought on the 19th of 2010. And we're going to make the assumption that we sold today. And our buy-in price, we said, was 81.81. And our share count was 61. So your returns would actually be quite similar. Your price change, based on price change alone, you would have uh, received a return of 134%. But uh, 3M pays dividends, so your actual return would have been much higher at 215%. So that gives you a brief understanding of the uh, backtesting function. Uh, you can make this as complex as you want. You can do something like this strategy, but have it short sell when you cross the upper band or all sorts of cool things. But I just wanted to give you a brief overview of it so you could see what it looks like. And I, I hadn't, again, I hadn't covered it in a past video, so I thought, why not mention it briefly today? Okay, that'll wrap it up for this video. Um, I had some suggestions from some viewers on some other functions I might do uh, soon. Uh, I also am looking to do some other videos outside of the Bloomberg Terminal, only because I realize most people don't have access to it. So maybe we'll do some stuff in Excel or Thinkorswim or... Uh, some other platform. If you're interested in that, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day and uh, be well.